Hello and welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. It's a nice sunny day. We're now in metrological spring, but it happens to be bitterly cold. It's only about two degrees above freezing, so hence I'm dressed like this. Anyway, welcome back to the uh, Waters and Stanton video channel. By the way, we were very privileged to be invited down to ICOM recently because ICOM, like so many companies, have had big restrictions on who can go into the premises and who can't. And we were privileged to be the first dealer that had been invited back to ICOM UK to have a look at their latest products. Now, I can't uh, show you too much about their premises because uh, they didn't want us to wander around too much. But uh, without a camera, we were able to see some very interesting products, some very interesting developments, and learn that ICOM are still very much behind the ham radio industry, which is great news. The strength of ICOM in Japan as regards amateur radio doesn't weaken at all. So we can expect to see yet more products from ICOM. But this video is not about ICOM, it's all about the Hustler 4B TV. Now I did a video on this about a couple of weeks ago I think it was now. The 4B TV is a very capable vertical antenna that covers 40, 20, 15 and 10 meters. It fits easily into your garden. It doesn't need uh, any guys, it's self-supporting. will handle a kilowatt. So it's a very capable antenna and what's more it's not overly expensive. The only thing I would say is we hear now that the price of metal in the next few months is going to increase and I guess that will have an effect on all antennas. So that's worth bearing in mind if you're wondering about whether you should buy this or buy that. Anyway, the 4B TV is a great antenna, but the one thing that it misses out is the 17 meter band and it's a band I really enjoy because 17 metres often opens up to some DX that is not there on 20 metres and 15 metres is still dead, but 17 metres seems to have that magic about it where signals can just pop out from nowhere, particularly in the early to mid-afternoon. So, I thought I would find out how I can make my 4B TV, a 4-band vertical, into a 5-band vertical that included the 18 megahertz or 17 meter band. And it's actually quite easy. I mean, there are several ways of doing it, but the way I'm gonna show you today is a very simple way, something that you can make. Now, I'm not an engineer, and you'll see when I show you me preparing the bits and pieces that I'm no engineer, but I did make it work. And I think you can make it work as well. So let's go in from this cold, but spring day, spring, well they say it's spring, yeah, this cold spring day, let's go inside and let me show you what I've done and how I achieved it. In order to get the 4B TV to work on 17 meters, we need to do a bit of engineering work. Now, I said at the beginning of the video, I'm no mechanical engineer, and that's, that's a fact, but I can use a power drill and if I'm very careful, I can also use a hacksaw. And I happen to know where my nearest B&Q is. That's really all I need to know, I need to do. So let me describe how we get the 4B TV to work on 17 meters. Now here on the screen, I show the bottom of the 4B TV. The bottom section is 10 meters. That operates on 10 meters courtesy of that 10 meter trap you can see uh, near the top. Now I've added a 17 meter mobile whip, which is attached below the 10 meter section. To understand how this works, imagine that an antenna is a series resonance circuit. And what actually happens is that this 17 meter whip acts as a series resonance circuit. Normally the antenna shows a high reactance on 17 meters, but if we add that whip near the top section of the 10 meter part of the antenna, then all of a sudden we've got an antenna that is also resonant on 17 meters. Now it's not that critical where you attach that whip on the 10 meter section, but really you need to place it as high up as possible. 
and then bring it to resonance by adjusting the whip above the uh, loading coil on the 17 meter antenna. And when operating on 10 meters, that 17 meter whip is highly reactive and doesn't play any part on 10 meters. Very conveniently, Hustler actually make a 17 meter mobile antenna, and that's what I've used. Now to make the necessary hardware, you need a bit of angle alloy, which you can get from your local B&Q or any uh, similar hardware store. I cut off a length of approximately 25 centimeters long. I don't trust my eye for getting a straight uh, right angle edge, so I use the guide as you can see here. I was pretty happy with the result, although of course whether it's tidy or untidy has no effect on the performance of it. As this bit of angle was going to be attached to the vertical antenna, I needed to drill a couple of holes to mount a U-bolt. At the other end, on the opposite surface, I drilled a 3 8 inch hole because the Hustler mobile antenna has got a 3 8 inch female connection, so I needed to put a bolt through. The bolt I had was slightly too long, so I had to put it in the vise and cut a bit off. And here you can see the finished item with the antenna mounted and the U-bolt ready to clamp onto the antenna. And here's the whip mounted on the side of the antenna which makes quite a nice installation. I'm going to move that further up nearer the trap, it, uh, the 10 meter trap that is. It doesn't make too much difference um, to the tuning of the whip but it does mean to say that more of the antenna will be active on the 17 meter band. I see no reason why I can't do the same for 12 meters, like a sort of Christmas tree effect, and mount the 12 meter whip on the opposite side. Sunshine really encourages you to get out into the garden, doesn't it? So I've come out into the garden today uh, to do a bit more. <laughs> it's really nice. Um, it's not quite so cold, but it's it's not quite spring yet. Anyway, I decided that I would move the whip right up just underneath the 10 meter trap, which I've done. And it doesn't make much difference. The whip needs to be tuned a bit more. But one of the things that I think probably some of you will ask about is uh, what about efficiency? Because it's rather short. Well, if you actually look at the system now with the whip it's actually a top loaded antenna and top loaded antennas are more efficient than base loaded antennas so if we place that whip which is around about seven or eight feet um, above ground on the 10 meter section of the antenna we've effectively converted it into a top loaded whip and top loaded whips are quite efficient they're certainly more efficient than base loaded whips it's been established for many many years look look up the ARRL mobile handbook. So as regards efficiency, well, the antenna is effectively um, a little under half size, but it is top loaded. And of course it's got the ground planes beneath it. So what is the efficiency? Well, I don't know. I would say it's probably no more than two dB under a full size quarter wave. And uh, I think that's probably a fair estimation. What will happen, of course, with any loaded uh, antenna is the bandwidth is reduced but of course we're talking about the 18 megahertz band which is only what 100 kilohertz wide so the narrow bandwidth really is something you can tolerate so with a top loaded antenna I think we're talking around about no more than 2 dB and I'm going to show you now the on, on the screen the uh, VSWR um, curves that I've got it shows you a very obvious resonance and it's, on the, uh, what is it, be the 20, the 18, the 21, and the 28 megahertz bands. I think that's what I'm going to put up on the screen. <laughs> that's, the, uh, that's the aim anyway. Well, there's more work to be done yet. So I think I could probably place that whip above the 10 meter trap um, on the 15 meter section. I'm not quite sure what the interaction would be, but I think it might work. That would make the system even more efficient. And of course, as I think I've hinted somewhere else in the video, that you can repeat this with, say, the 12 meter uh, whip. 
to give you 12 meters and uh, well it's something for the future and I will try that at some time in the future but I hope this will encourage you to try this because it does give you the 18 megahertz band and of course don't forget it will also work on the 5BT and the 6B TV the same the same uh, principle will work the uh, uh, the whip on the side just just below the 10 meter trap should give you 18 megahertz on all three of the models the 4BT with the 5BT and the 6B TV. Quite low cost. Victoria, a very good uh, afternoon to you, my good friend. And you are 5 and 9, 59 here north of the Arctic Circle. And my name is Tour, a tango of Star Romeo. I go for 3 of Star Juliet Victor from Lima Alpha 6, Kilo Star Alpha. Yeah, the Hustler range of verticals, very good verticals. They the 4B TV is self-supporting. The 5B TV really needs a little bit of guying. Uh, 6B TV does as well, but the 4B TV is really uh, great. It covers 40 through to 10 meters, 40, 20, 15, and 10. And with this add-on, it also adds the 17 meter band. So it becomes a five band antenna. And I think we could persuade it to operate on 12 meters. And if I can persuade you to do that then I'll come back and let you know but it's great to have a self-supporting antenna and they're rugged as well because you know during these storms that we've had over the last uh, what couple of weeks or two weeks ago rather um, I don't I haven't heard of a single uh, hustler antenna uh, being damaged uh, some of the lesser well, more the flimsy antennas uh, possibly would have suffered. But anyway, the Hustler is great. It's rugged. It does the job. Excellent performance. And if you've got a small garden, well, you know, give it some serious thought. I'm told that we have got the full range in stock at the moment uh, in the warehouse at Portsmouth. So uh, if you are thinking about it, go onto our website, take a look. And, uh, well, as I say, it's up to you. But... Uh, uh, I can recommend it. Uh, I've had one of these Hustler antennas, which I think I've mentioned before, for quite a few years now, um, and uh, it, it works extremely well. This particular one I've only had for three years because the previous one got damaged <laughs> in a bad way <laughs> uh, when we were moving. I think that the removal men thought it was just scrap metal. Anyway, uh, the, apart from that, uh, it had served me for about 15 years, and this one's been up for three years now, and it's still still works very well. So thank you for watching this video. Thank you for the support on this channel. Much appreciated. Enjoy your ham radio. Things are getting better now on the HF bands and uh, we're getting the lighter evenings and whoa, we've got a bit of spring weather, even though I don't think the thermometer has been told it's spring, but the sunshine, the sun up there has been told it's spring. The clouds have moved away, certainly in the south here at the moment. But there we are. It's only early March yet. In the meantime, enjoy your ham radio, take care, see you in the next video.